I hate CLAs. CLA, contributor license agreement. I'm gonna give you an example. Let's jump into it. Okay, so I recently was contributing to this project called Jaseki. I've learned how to pronounce it now, finally. Uh, the actual contribution isn't that important. I was adding support for my text editor to highlight this programming language's syntax. Uh, and when I submitted my PR, I was immediately met with this nonsense, a CLA assistant. Now, you might ask, what is a contributor license agreement? A contributor license agreement has two main goals. One is it allows a project to relicense a, a contribution at a future date, usually to turn it into like a commercial license or something else. Uh, and the second is to certify that the contribution was made by the individual and that they are you know, properly adhering to the licensing of the project. Uh, and usually they're kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. They're a, a barrier to entry to contribution. And often if I see a project that has a CLA, I'm not going to bother. As you can see here, <laughs> three of four checks passed. I did not bother. I did not sign a CLA. Um, because often it requires you to open another website, uh, give away rights to a contribution, and uh, forfeit your copyright to the things that you contribute to the project. And in almost all cases, oh, and I should, I should preface all of this, I'm not a lawyer, none of this is legal advice. I know licenses are a sensitive topic and I am not by any means an expert in this. I'm mostly just a grumbly open source person and uh, yeah, not legal advice, but disclaimers. Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, they're often run by a third party application. You have to connect them and give them information. You have to sign away rights. And I, j I just don't want to do that. That, you know, that's a barrier to entry that I think most projects should not have. And most projects don't need this. Uh, almost always ACLA is required if you are a corporation that may at some point decide to uh, revoke your permissive licenses and instead relicense under some sort of restrictive commercial only license. You know, example, uh, MongoDB utilized a CLA to uh, take their previously open source project and turn it into freemium or source available or, or however you want to refer to uh, the MongoD MongoDB uh, source availability. Um, and for the most part, your open source projects, you know, your random libraries that you're making or tools that you're making, you don't need a CLA. You shouldn't be, you know, <laughs> you, you probably are never going to try and, you know, relicense them in a way that restricts the usage or requires you to have a, a paid license for them. That kind of misses the point of open source at that point. And additionally, you definitely don't need a CLA if you're using some sort of permissive license, which already allows uh, you to sublicense <laughs> so, or to sell copies of the software. So, um, you know, you would, you would be using a CLA to revoke all of these uh, permissions to prevent somebody from being able to do this. Uh, it also, I guess, in some ways allows you to take a, a copy left license, a license which is restrictive and, you know, break those terms uh, for your own, you know, for the, the organizer's benefit. Uh, okay, so we've talked a little bit about CLAs. I want to talk about alternatives and some of the ones that are used in open source. Uh, the most common one that I've seen, well, actually, the most popular alternative is just don't bother. <laughs> just have your license in your repository, take contributions as normal, and don't worry about this problem at all. Um, but if you want something slightly more involved, uh, the Linux kernel uses what's called DCO. This is actually a very, very simple way to assert authorship of a particular change set and say that you are, you know, abiding to this particular license agreement, developer certificate of origin. This is developercertificate.org, uh, which has this particular text. And I guess the Linux kernel has been doing this since 2006. Um, I'm not going to read this. It's legal mumble jumble. Uh, but the basic idea behind it is use little s inside git commit. And actually, I think I have a YouTube video about this. Uh, YouTube. Uh, why aren't you loading YouTube? Anthony writes code sign. Is that gonna find it? Uh, I think it's in this video. Yes, dash dash sign off. So you can watch this video if you wanna find that. Um, but there's a built-in option to get, which is dash little s, which will add this little bit automatically to your commit message body. And this is essentially all you need to achieve DCO. You're saying, I am asserting authorship of this commit and uh, therefore I am abiding by this. 
And you can read this nonsense, which is, well, it's not nonsense. You can read this bit about how they differ from CLAs and um, that, but DCO is often a much more lightweight process, which sort of has some of the similarities to a CLA, but is a lot less restrictive than uh, having to go to a third party website, click through some things, sign away some rights, blah, blah, blah. And DCO is also a lot easier to validate. You simply look for this message in all of the commits of a pull request. And there's you know, GitHub bots that can do this, or GitHub Actions, or if you're on some other um, source control provider, there's there's other ways to do this as well. Yeah, in fact, like <laughs> GitLab, TBD. Uh, I guess Garrett has a setting built in. Like, There are ways to pretty easily check for this and um, prevents other stuff. Other things that I've seen that are similar in vain to these is one which I don't know that has any legal precedence, which is what my previous work used. <laughs> this is the uh, pull request template, and this is the text that would get filled in by default inside every pull request. And yeah, Sentry can use modify, copy, and redistribute my contributions. I, I do think it is a little tongue in cheek here. Like, so here's the deal. I don't know how this would hold up in court, but. It certainly uses Sentry's uh, cheeky branding here to try and have a similar idea. Not like, okay, if you don't touch the legal boilerplate, you're adhering to, or you're agreeing to this. I don't know. I don't know how that would stand in court. But anyway, this is another alternative that I've seen uh, others use, and um, there's you know potential alternatives. But honestly, the easiest is just have a permissive license and you know don't care about it. Let, let people freely use your work. Anyway, uh, I, I oh, I guess the addendum to this is uh, I managed to convince this project to no longer use a CLA. So if you look at most recent pull requests, uh, we've gotten rid of, yeah, you can see, there are only three checks now. <laughs> Pre-commit fix, nice. Um, only three checks now. The CLA is no longer a requirement. And so we're going to be moving on with that one. Anyway, hopefully you found that interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.